Hi, I'm John Kachoy and I'm the Literary Manager at Australian Plays and today we're talking to Marianne Butler about her new play, Cusp. Uh, hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so, thanks for talking to us. Do you want to tell us just a little bit about Cusp and, and how it came to, to be? Um, sure. So, Cusp is the story, um, it was commissioned by Australian Theatre for Young People and um, I think that was part of the Australia, Australian Plays Ignition um, uh, bucket. Yeah. Or, um, Sorry, can I say that? In, in, initiative. Yeah. <laughs> initiative. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was commissioned by Australian Theatre for Young People and it was part of Ignition, which is an uh, Australia, it's um, a PWA initiative. And it is the story of three young Northern Territory people who are on the cusp of adulthood. And so it sort of covers a bit of a spectrum. It's one young woman who lives out at Yirrkala. Uh, one young man from Palmerston and another young woman from Palmerston. They're all going through different sort of pretty big life changes and life shifts in order to navigate their way from kind of 16, 17, 18 years old to adulthood. Yeah, great. And so what was your original pitch and has that changed in the actual writing of the work? That's, uh no, that was my original pitch. Yeah. I mean, my, my, when they approached me, um, I had a, they gave me a couple of options in terms of whether it's a big cast or for mm. young audiences. And I, I'm, uh, I don't do big cast stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I do small cast stuff. And I just, um, I'm really interested in, in young people, and particularly young Territorians, because mm. living up there, a lot of those young people, their choices are quite limited. Mm. So, for example, if you want to study medicine, you can't do that there. You have to come, you know, you do your first degree there, but then you have to come down south and... Um, so a lot of things are not available to young people mm. there and we lose a lot of young people. They, some of them come back, but um, so I'm sort of intrigued in just teasing that out a bit and exploring yeah. where they're at. And do you think they're seeing themselves in, in film and theatre and, or, or are they not? Um, well, uh, ATYP did Sugarland, which was, That's you know, right. a beautiful yeah. project from, from up Catherine Way. And there's a, there are a few stories coming through, yes, yeah. yeah. But I don't think to the same degree that urban Australian, young Australians are, are represented or reflected back to themselves. Yeah. I suppose we tend to assume that all the urban experience is the same around different urban spaces yeah. rather than that specificity of, yeah. of plays. And, and it you, is very different there. Yeah, and you've been in the Northern Territory for, for a while. How, how has your writing, you know, do you, do you feel like you've deepened different interests or discovered different things about your yeah. work because yeah. of that? Yeah, it, it's shifted fundamentally, it really has. Um, I, I was based in Brisbane before then and I was in Brisbane for nine years and I was sort of dabbling in theatre and film but I hadn't really pushed myself to go sort of into the full professional realm. Mm. And um, all my works were urban dramas, yeah. all of them. And what became really interesting about moving up there is that sense of um, you know massive, vast landscape. So my first play, Halfway There, was inspired. Um, my, my then husband and I were driving from Darwin to Brisbane. So we went down the, what's called the Barclay Highway. And in the middle of the Barclay Highway, there's this place called Barclay Regional Homestead. It's run off generators. It's out in the middle of nowhere. And we literally there camping and we heard these dingoes howling across the landscape, which is a really eerie sound. And we were sitting there swilling wine while the <laughs> dingoes howled. And, and, um, and he said to me, do you know this used to be a brothel? And, and I was like, no way. And he said, yeah, it, was the, it used to service the trucks that came That's up the, the Barclay Highway. Point. <laughs> exactly. Oh, God. And, um, and then he showed me the dongers, like out the back of this sort of generator place with, with these old um, iron, you know, corrugated iron dongers where the women used to work from in the 70s in that heat, in that. And that kind of something just went poof. So my first play was Halfway There, which was about the remote area, um, remote area sex work industry. Um, which is still, you know, very active mm. in a place like Boralua and, um, and so, yeah, that sort of became fundamental. And then my second play, How I've Lost Hearts, was I drove from Darwin to Sydney by myself in my camper van with my dog. And um, that, just that whole thing, going down through the guts of the country, through Cooper Pedy mm. and, you know, Alice Springs. And, and that play was very much about that and distance and the things that can happen if you get bogged out there by yourself, mm. you know. So the environment become, became a massive part of my um, inspiration and my voice in, in a sense, yeah. Yeah, and so what are, what are some of the challenges for a playwright? You mm -hmm. know, I think in some senses every Australian playwright grapples with presenting the, the immensity of the country in a black box somewhere. Yeah. How have you grappled with that or are you grappling with, with that? Well, I. What became interesting to me and what I wasn't expecting, because my urban dramas were very much talky, 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 um, what, what came in my head 
and I've always resisted poetry my whole life. I mean, I've studied <laughs> it, but I've, no, I'm not a poet, not a poet. And bizarrely, I think what happened is that kind of landscape eked into my work and actually made me um, write in a, in a more increasingly poetic manner. And that, that was really strange. I mm. wasn't expecting that. And I resisted it for a long time. And then in the end, I just was like, look, I'm just going to dive into this. And Jenny Kemp, who I absolutely yeah. love, all of my plays have gone through her workshop process. And she does this thing, it's a generative writing workshop. We sit there for a week and she just throws all these left of field things. Yeah. And the, the challenge, the first time I just let myself free fall, she calls it free falling actually, just free fall into that. What came up on the page was like, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it really surprised me, but I went with it. Yeah. And that, that was, um, that sort of allowed me, I think, to go, okay, if this is what your natural voice is, then please, you yeah. know, explore it. and. And then the shaping of that into a play became quite challenging. But, um, and I'm still finding that obviously, you know, every play is different, but I am finding myself more and more willing to let the play tell me what it needs to be rather than me telling the play what it needs to be. Yeah. So if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Um, so what's the play festival process, you know, these last few days been uh, like? It's been awesome. <laughs> it's, been, it's been fantastic. Um, so we had a development week. So Fraser Caulfield's directing this work. And um, so we had a development week, week um, not last week, but the week before. So I came down from Darwin for that and then went back and then had a cyclone and came back here <laughs> for this week. But just sitting in the room and watching those um, absolutely beautiful actors um, make it fly, really. You know, they really, the first cold read, I just sat there and they just nailed it. They nailed it. And it's just, they've just been getting better and better and better and in terms of, uh, that, uh, we were sitting there in the room today and I'll, I actually started crying at my own work, which is a bit awkward, you know, it's kind of like you're not supposed to do that. But you hope, you hope they, that the writer's happy when they're crying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they just, I heard things that, for the first time that I had never heard in the script that I've been spending a year with mm. and they showed me things in it that I didn't know were there and that's very humbling and very beautiful and, yeah. and incredibly exciting too. That's great. And so yeah. what are you excited about the most of this next little stage of it getting some sort of an audience in front of some version of the, the play? Well, I think hearing today, I realised that um, I, I want to play more with it and I want to play more with the structure of it in particular. I want to push the boundaries of it further. Mm. So that's very exciting to me to go, this is not the end of it. This mm. is kind of the start of it. Um, and I'm, I think I'm just excited about the, the possibility of going to production and getting, you know, kind of taking flight and you know, the hard yards before that, because I love writing, like I love the act of it. The actual act of opening up my laptop, to me, makes me feel incredibly, it's like endorphins <laughs> or something weird or adrenaline. So I literally get that every time I, I do that action, which it's sounds weird, but no, it's true. It's probably useful um, for the profession. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so there's something really exciting about knowing that I'm going to go back home with this thing, with a kind of a new perspective, having seen it read a couple of times and seen how an audience responds, which is always pivotal, of course. Mm. You know, you kind of you don't really know what it is sometimes until you see it in front of an audience. and. And, and there will, of course, you know, the critical things as well. But I think that's exciting too, to know what isn't working is as exciting as knowing what is working. Yeah, correct. And then being able to take that back really fresh and kind of re-enter it and yeah. see, see what else is in there. Yeah.